Let's get more with our Sultan, a counterterrorism expert, and Rahim Kassam, a senior distinguished fellow with the Gatestone Institute. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And Oz, I'd like to start with you. Is this embassy now a security challenge? Is it an elevated target, do you think? Well, I think American embassies abroad are always going to be targets, right? right? That, that's something to be understood. And I think the security preparations that the Trump administration has taken are, are noble, at least in this regard. Uh, it's, in, it's a good step forward, I think, in terms of pushing a little bit to really start getting that peace process moving again. Uh, Rahim, I want to discuss uh, the, the violent riots that we saw in, in Gaza today. An estimated 40,000 Palestinians are taking part, throwing stones, Molotov cocktails, rocks launching uh, bomb kites towards Israel. Hundreds are charging the border now. Israeli soldiers were forced to respond with force and over 50 Palestinians were killed. Now, the U.S. is placing the blame on Hamas. What do you think? Well, it's about bloody time, I think, to be quite honest with you. We've had administration upon administration. Uh, and in my country, in the United Kingdom, we've had uh, prime minister after prime minister trying to equivocate over this, trying to be morally relativistic over where the attacks are stemming from. And this U.S. administration has been unequivocal about it. Uh, Hamas, the terrorist entity that is still in a dictatorship government in Gaza, is responsible for this. There is a reason that they are setting tires on fire and hiding behind the smoke while they attack. Israeli soldiers there on the Gaza border. Uh, the U.S. administration, Donald Trump's administration, has been unequivocal about where the embassy needs to be, and it's now being unequivocal about where the terrorism is stemming from. I think there is a major paradigm shift happening in the Middle East, not just on the Israel-Palestinian borders, uh, but also, as you see, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran. And I think this all plays into the broader theme of this presidency. It is foreign policy by power, not foreign policy by bowing. Peace through strength, and we'll get back to that in a minute. But I want to discuss these these riots that, that are happening uh, today, Oz, and that have been happening mm -hmm. for the past uh, seven weeks, uh, particularly on Fridays, because Israel is doing what it can to, to try and mitigate it. Israel dropping leaflets, telling the Palestinians do not come near, near the border, warning them. Uh, yet the United Nations and other countries are saying that Israel has been using dis proportionate force here. Do you think that Israel is using disproportionate force in this situation? I think it's it's a tenuous situation. You know, on the one side, you have uh, really kind of a lack of leadership in the, the part of the Palestinians. And uh, you've got a show of their ire at, in terms of what's been going on for the past couple of weeks. On the opposite side of this, I think there needs to be some evaluation of how the Israeli policy has been moving forward in terms of dealing with this. There are a lot of struggles that we're going to have to get through in order to figure out how to build a long-lasting peace. But I do think that, you know, the steps that were taken today are showing that, one, America is forthright in saying, listen, we have a strong policy perspective of where we want to go. And two, um, the Palestinians and the Israelis should be sorting this out in a more deliberate fashion, one of which I think that may come to a head, uh, unfortunately, through these types of riots. Well, it's hard to sort things out in, in, in a deliberate fashion uh, when you have uh, Hamas inciting this violence. And uh, Rahima, we have uh, Hamas posting pictures on, on social media. They're showing uh, the shortest routes from the border fence to nearby Israel communities in case uh, these protesters do manage to breach the security fence. And as we said, Israel has been criticized for using excessive force. So assuming Israel just let them through the border, they didn't stop them. They didn't have to shoot them with either uh, pellet guns or rubber bullets or, or live ammunition, as has been the case. W what do you think that uh, these infiltrators would do once they cross over the border? Well, I must uh, respectfully disagree with your, your other esteemed guest. I think it is specifically because there has been a leadership on the Palestinian side that has been a leadership geared towards incitement for so long that we're seeing this happen in such large numbers now. Like you say, when you when you try and, and, and go through someone else's border, another sovereign nation's border, what do you expect to happen? Now, I know that there have been problems on the uh, southern border in the United States and, of course, in borders all across the European Union uh, that are not 
properly policed. But Israel is now setting a precedent and saying that actually, you know, we have a sovereign nation. If you do not have a sovereign nation, you have nothing at all. And so, you know, for the Israeli forces to, to respond in the way they have, I think, I think this has been deliberate, as it always is, by Hamas to try and play the international media, to try and get sympathy on their side. But with the advent of social media, with more journalists, independent journalists, reporters on the ground, we're now no longer having to rely on a couple of people who are being being spun a yarn uh, by a terrorist entity. And I think the world is now making sense of this. The world is now managing to make sense of who these people are in Gaza and why and how often they hide behind children. So the Israeli response, in my in my estimation, but, Rahim, has been perfectly proportionate. Is, is the world making sense when the condemnation is still very much directed at Israel here? Well, luckily, the United Nations no longer represents the world, and it hasn't done that in a very long time. When you have nations like Saudi Arabia and Syria uh, chairing the Human Rights Council, I'm, I'm pretty, I think it's safe to say that they don't represent the views of the world. It is an organization which has been manifestly corrupted. And sure, there are nations like indeed my own, the United Kingdom, which again, as usual, is placing blame on the side of the Israelis. But the fact that the United States, for, for the first time in a very long time, has managed to say unequivocally this is due to the terrorist entity in Gaza. I think that represents a major shift. And by the way, it'll represent the same type of major shift that we're going to see happen on the Iran nuclear deal over the next coming months. We're going to see the same thing as regards the Palestinian territories too. As we do know uh, that Hamas is urging people uh, to cross the border, uh, mm -hmm. telling them that it has been breached falsely, saying that in order to to uh, incite more uh, more protests and to incite like a bigger mass, other people do you think aware that Hamas is perhaps manipulating them in a way? I think part of the problem is that Hamas hasn't been organized since they were allowed to hold an election that got them into power in the first place. And the, the second thing we're dealing with here is that for literally the past 15 years or so, Hamas hasn't had the type of leadership that will allow for the moving forward of a more substantial accord. To the uh, Iran comment, I want to point out that there is no longer a, uh, a deal, okay, that was rebuked by the Trump administration. Um, and, and we should be looking at them, you know, with a closer lens because I think that's really where a lot of the radical threat comes from. In terms of the folks of Gaza, in terms of the Palestinians, I stand with the Trump administration. I think that there is a necessity to bring the Israelis and the Palestinians to some sort of solution that really allows these people to live side by side. But I think at the same point in time, what we're going to have to do is find those leaders amongst the Palestinians, because otherwise we may just be in this stalemate for a period of time. Uh, very quickly, Rahim, in the 30 seconds we have left, do the Palestinians have the leadership that's necessary to cut a kind of deal here? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I would love to agree um, with, with my colleague on here at the moment as well, but I think it's entirely quixotic to think that, that uh, over the course of the decades, they've proved to us time and time again, the Palestinians, that they cannot find moderate leadership, that they do not want a peace deal, and they would rather put their children in the front lines. So, you know, as long as that continues to go on, no, you're not going to get peace. All right. Uh, Rahim Kassam, appreciate your analysis. Oh, Sultan, thank you for being with us here in studio. Thank you both.